I mean, that's our goal is to make better people. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Episode 6 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. My name's Jeremy Lesniak, your host for the show, and the president of Whistlekick Sparring Gear and Apparel. On today's show, we have Shihan Wayne Mello, a Shotokan karate instructor and promoter from central Massachusetts. Shihan Mello is one of my former instructors, and I had a great time talking to him. Despite knowing him for more than 20 years, I learned a lot about his past and what really makes him tick. Stay tuned. I think you'll love this episode. Shihan Mello, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Good to be here. Well, I thank you for, for coming on and talking to me. I know it's a little early. I know you're a little under the weather there, but I think we can get through this okay. You sound fine on my end. So. Well, that's good. I'm feeling good. Good. So why don't you start by telling us, I mean, of course, I, I know your martial arts history, good good portion of it anyway, but how about you tell everybody else how you got started and where and when and, and all that. Okay, I got started uh, in martial arts. I, I used to do boxing when I was a kid, and um, one day we had this guy come up who was uh, a black belt in Kyokushin, and it just blew me away, and I just knew that I had to do something like this. This is probably around 1968, and um, unfortunately, I, didn't, I don't come from a, you know, a really well-to-do family or anything, so... So uh, I wasn't able to pay for karate lessons, and I was um, just followed this guy for a little while, and uh, ended up going into service and stuff for about eight years. And uh, when I got out, I met my instructor, uh, John Almeida, out in New Bedford, and I trained with him. And uh, since they, because we met Tabata out of Boston, who just uh, located here from Japan, and uh, that's where I got my my first black belt was from him. And uh, let's study the same style. Um, throughout my career, I'll always been a short kind of practitioner. And that's, I mean, that's kind of uncommon for someone to train for that long, at least these days, and stick with one instructor and one style. Yeah, and I feel I feel fortunate that I still train with him now. I still train with him on a monthly basis, and um, you know, it's just been great. He's also, besides being a mentor, he's been you know best friend. So, and. Um, you know, any any time I have a problem, um, I've been able to uh, just go to him and, and I'll tell you what, we work out pretty much everything. I've never had a problem with him at all. That's great. That's, that's uh, I think, a testament to doing things in a traditional way. There, are, Of course, there's a lot right. of politics. Yeah, and I, and I believe that. I still, I'm still one of those people that believe that every – Martial artists, I don't care if you're an instructor or what you are, you still need to have somebody to look up to in the martial arts. And uh, and I still do. And my instructor, believe it or not, still has his instructor, <clears throat> excuse me, still has one of his instructors that um, he doesn't work out with him anymore, but he's always there to uh, to help guide him and stuff. So, And, you know, he's That's 65 great. years old. You know, him and I are pretty close in age. And, um, you know, to both still have instructors, I think he's, Pretty, you know, something that most people don't have at this point. So, mm, it's yeah. definitely pretty. Uh, I don't know if lucky is the right word, but fortunate. Right. For yeah, sure. I think fortunate is is the right word because we could get anybody, but we just happen to be fortunate that we still have the same people that we started with. So, so it you know, shows a lot. I and mean, I've been training with him for, uh, geez, uh, I don't even know, thirty five, forty years, something like that, and. Uh, so I'd still be with him today. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy with that. And it it shows in, in you know, of course, at events I interact with a lot of your students and now some of their stu- their students. And uh I've definitely seen that pass down the line, so that's great. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, and you know, like everybody else, I mean that's our goal is to make better people. And um uh, it is definitely proven true on my end, so I have some great people out there. Of course, we've had the other, you know, a couple go the other way too. But for the most part, I'm I'm really happy with the way that people turn out. So, cool. So why don't we switch gears and why don't you tell us your best martial arts story or one of them? Uh, my best martial arts story, huh? I would have to say, I would have to say some of my best martial arts stories revolve around Jeff Wood and the Dow Karate School. We we attended his tournaments for years and years. And um, 
I just remember one time going up there with my instructor and stuff, and he was doing breaking, you know, always cement breaking in the um, in the tournament. And we'd gone out the night before, and we were out till all hours of the night. And um, when we finally got up, you know, we, I looked at him, and he, I said, you know, we're not going to do this, are we? And he goes, oh, why wouldn't we? I mean, the two of us sitting there with headaches and hangovers, and honestly, I mean, I have a lot of good stories, but this is one that I just thought to myself, how can anybody even think we could do this? And, you know, we went up there, and uh, everybody knew who we were and, and everything else. And this was just one of those things where mind over matter. And, you know, to go out there and still took first place in the break-in and everything, that's a story that I'll tell you what I've told so many people. A lot of people just find it hard to believe, but it's just one of those things where you need to get everything out of your mind and just end up taking first place and break in. And um, it was just amazing that we could actually <laughs> follow through with what we had originally planned. And, um, I, you know, for all the stories I have, I mean, I could go on and on, but this is just something that just said to me, you know, you pretty much do anything you want. And um, it doesn't matter, you know, how bad things are sometimes. And we, it was just, it was just amazing that we could actually go out and perform at that level against the people that we performed against and still do that well. So that's okay, going to be so one of my best stories. <laughs> so let's, let's take that back a second. So yeah. here you are, you're, you were up there the night before in Augusta. Yeah. Okay. So, so we're in Augusta, Maine. It's, it's the night before the tournament and yeah. you've gone out and you've, we've you gone out with, yeah, with Jeff had a couple Wood drinks. And, and all his people, yeah, and a couple more. Yep. And, um, and it's just, it, yeah, yep, go ahead. Uh, so for listeners that, that don't recognize some of these names, Jeff Woods, this was his tournament. This was a, um, I, I remember back in the 80s and, and especially in the early 90s, this was a, a huge event. It was. It was, was one the, of the biggest events. The that's why I think it, Center. Right. That's why I think it's, uh, you know, one of my best stories. <clears throat> Excuse me. It, um because it was such a big event. There were people, he used to bring people in from all over the country, from Bermuda. And um, just it was just amazing, the amount of people there. And I thought, you know, after all this, you know, we're not going to be able to perform at the level that we were hoping to. And, um, you know, for whatever reason, you just just rose to the level. And, you know, you, you remember the tournament used to start at 9 o'clock. And uh, to be able to perform at that level at that time of day, it was just to me it was just amazing that we could actually do this. So 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 here you are, you've you know, you're you're hungover, you're tired. Oh, and yeah. do you do you remember what, what you did for a break? Um, we did uh it was all cement. It was uh it was punching, you know, it was it was always my instructor always did like say six cement blocks at a time. Always he was known as cement man. Myself I did a lot of the um I did some cement, I did some boards, and we always did the better nails with the um, with the cement and stuff. We just zipped through it like it was not like like any other day. So what would I mean, you chalk that up to? Just just being able to clear your head and and I think, yeah, exactly. I think it was just a matter of just putting yourself in in the moment and say you know forget everything else that happened the day before, or the week before, or anything else. And, and just go out there and perform like you normally would. And, and that's exactly what we did. And um, it was just great. It was just great the way we finished. And, you know, to finish, you know, in first place was just that much better because most of the people that were there, they were out with us the night before. You know, Jeff Wood always had a, a huge uh, get-together before his event. So so, they, so knew that... what, they knew what we had been through, and we knew what those, those guys had been through. So for us to, you know, out of all those people to go out there and do what we did, you know, was, <laughs> was pretty amazing. Almost, almost gives a new um, definition of the term drunken master. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> have have exactly. everybody show up the next day a little, little under the weather and see what they can do with that haze in front of them. Right. And I do remember, you know, that some of the judges just sitting in the corner looking at us and they're just smiling and shaking their heads like there's no way in the world this is going to happen or no way in the world this is going to feel good. But, you know, something, if anybody sitting in the stands, they wouldn't have known anything else. They just thought that we were just guys coming up there to uh, do our best. And you couldn't tell. You couldn't tell. Oh, that's great. 
So hard, kind of hard to follow that up, but we're going to try. Uh, how how has the martial arts made you a better person? Um, I think I think just by being dedicated and realizing um, exactly exactly what I wanted to do in life uh, through martial arts and, and everything else has just made me focus so much so much more on everything that I've done, whether it be working, uh, whether it be teaching or helping people out. I just think. Martial arts has just, you know, had, uh, put me on firm ground. Whereas, you know, before before all this, I used to do, you know, crazy things, you know, like every other, you know, teenager and stuff. And then as I as I got older, I just realized, you know, something I need I need some kind of direction, and this just set me on that course. And you know, you being a martial artist, you know, you see how you know one out of every one hundred people gets their black belt. Um, okay. out of, you know, out of that. You know, you take uh, that amount of people and you find out how many make second degree or third degree, and it becomes amazing. So, you know, the the path that I stayed on, it, I mean, I, I'm happy with the way it it turned out, and, and apparently other people are too. So, how about a, a tough point in your life, a, a low point maybe that the martial well, arts was able to help you move through? I, yeah, you know something, I think. If there was one low point in my life, it had to be in 2005 when my dad died. And um, I mean, he was a guy I looked up to all the time. Went through a, you know, went through a chemo and everything. And unfortunately, there was just nothing else I could do. And when he passed, you know, you really feel like you lose your best friend and um, you know, somebody that helped me my whole life. And, and now he was gone. And then you know something? My instructor just stepped up to the plate and. So I tell you what, he filled in, you know, he, he filled in as best he could and, you know, just just kind of told me exactly, you know, the things my father probably would have told me. And then, um, you know, something that I think, once again, just looking at that path that I was on, you know, not to stray from it and not say, you know, something, yeah, now I've got to do something else. And, nope, I just stayed on that path. And, you know, something I think about him every day, but I also think about the way that my instructor, you know, helped me through those hard times. You know, so it's not many low points in my life. So, well, that, that's great. That's good. Uh, something we we all should be so lucky um, to be able to say. So, not just your your martial arts training in this case, but your martial arts extended family. Exactly helped you through that, and I think that's yeah. that's important, and that's starting to become a theme right. in these interviews. Is it's not just the the training that we get, but it's the people that we associate with that we have around us that make us better martial artists, but maybe more importantly, better people. Exactly, exactly. And I, and I think, well, I don't think I know that's the goal of martial arts. You know, as a martial arts instructor, is to make the best person possible. It doesn't matter if you make them a fifth degree black belt, tenth degree black belt, or if he only goes up to green belt. I, I have students that have stayed with me. You know, uh, I don't know one or two years and they still stay in touch with me after you know 30 something years of teaching and i just call up and say you know some one of the one of the best things that i ever learned from you is this or one of the best things i ever learned from you is that and i still remember it today those things mean a lot that those things mean more than getting any kind of belt so cool yeah yeah i could i could see that i haven't been as fortunate to teach in the way that you have, but I can see, I, I see it myself, you know, just to, you know, to work with someone and see them take something and make it their yep. own. And, yep. and I tell people that all the time, no matter whether you train with me for one day or for, you know, I have students right now that with me for 30 years, they, um, they will always take something with them forever, forever. You know, whether it be something I said, something I taught them, they'll always have that with them. So. Great. So we've made reference to your instructor, Hanchi Almeida, mm -hmm. a few times in here. Now, other than him, is there someone you could say that's been pivotal, you know, in, in your martial arts upbringing? Well, you know, so I think his instructor, uh, which was such a Jack Leonardo, was an Aikido instructor. We trained with him many times. That's where we get a lot of our self-defense from. Um, he was just a great mentor, just just an awesome guy. He was elderly, um, and even when I first met him, he was you know he was getting older. 
but he would we would sit around tables and when he talked the place was just dead silence because he he made you feel like you belonged you know wherever you were going whether it's martial arts or anything else he just made you feel like you were on the right path he never had anything negative to say ever that i can remember and i you know i remember training with him many times and just and one of the best martial artists i've ever met and he was, he was a guy that did not care about rank and um it was sometime, I believe, in the late 80s, early 90s, somebody actually sent something to Japan and said, look, this guy's been doing this for 50 years. He's only a first-degree black belt. And then he was able to get all kinds of recognition for what he had done, and they brought him up to, you know, the appropriate level, you know, wherever, wherever it was. I, honestly, I don't remember what level it was, but... The people over there could not believe that after all these years he was still first degree. But he was a guy that did not care about rank. Rank meant nothing to him. You know, it really didn't. Uh, oh, that's, that's neat. That's living proof that uh, you don't get too many people who say, gee, I've been training for 40 years. I'm a first degree black belt. And he had a great school. He has great his school. still goes on today. He, you know, he died uh, a good 10 years ago. But um, his, still school, uh, excuse me, his school still goes on today. Wow, that's quite the legacy. So we talked a little bit about some time that you spent in competition. Is that something that's been uh, core to your martial arts training? You know, something it has. I mean, I, I actually didn't start competing until I was a brown belt. Before that, my instructor was on the uh, USA, the U.S. Uh, national team, and we were all just there to support him. We never competed at tournaments. We you know way back in the seventies and early eighties there were there were very few tournaments. And uh, he was lucky enough to be on a team with um you know some some really quality people. So you know we were almost like sparring partners at that time for him. And I don't want to get my, my brown belt and we said, look, I want you to just stop competing and you know something it's just something I I, I just like. I just I, I like doing it. You know, I mean you fight in the same school all the time, you fight the same people all the time. When you go to a, a tournament, you're fighting people of different styles, different levels, different builds, and it just became fun. You know, win or lose, I, I just had a great time, and I've met absolutely the best people in my life through uh, martial arts. Would do you say that was your your favorite part of competition was sparring? Um, I, I've seen you, know, you do some, constant I, not, competition. Not at first. I don't think at first sparring was was my favorite part because when I went for my first degree black belt, I failed the first time. And I thought, I thought it was because of my, uh, my fighting. And then said, the said to me, Oh no, no, you fight good. He said, but your cock, I lacks this and lacks that. And from that day on, I just devoted so much time to, to, um, kata, whether it be reading, whether it be watching videos, just to get everything I could out of it. And then it just became great. All of a sudden, you know, I start to turn, uh, you know, you start to get older. Then I started going back to fighting. And, I, and right now, I think I'd rather fight than do kata. But I know the true, uh, you know, the true meaning of, um, you know, any, any style karate starts in kata. And I still, I still love it. Don't get me wrong. I still love kata. But at this point, I just like going out there and still, still being able to fight a little. Oh, neat. Do you still compete? I haven't in the last year and a half because I tore my rotator cuff, but am I getting ready? Yes, I am. Oh, great. I still got a lot left in me. (laughs) I look forward to watching that. (laughs) If you could train with any martial artist, living or dead, who would it be and why? uh, Tough question. Tough question. I would... I would love to train with uh, Master Funakoshi, only because of all the stories I've read about him and the way they used to train um, when it was frowned upon to train anyway. But I would love to see how he taught way back when, see how different it is than, than the way it is today. I know things are a lot different today, but I would love to have uh, been part of that way back when. I'm... Yeah, I'm sure he's on a short list for a lot of people. Yeah, he is. You know, and and I tell you, I also trained with um, a couple of people that have actually trained with him. You know, like Sensei Kanazawa and Sensei Ozawa. 
um, I've actually got to train with those guys, and they tell me some stories that pretty much what you read. And I think, you know, still, if I could go back and train with him, it would be pretty awesome to do. Well, here, here's to hoping that in the next life we still have martial arts. And uh, I hope so. We can we can hang out and train with all those people that we that were lucky so enough cool. to be born in the same time as. Yep. How about martial arts films? Do you do you have a favorite flick? You know, I don't really have a, a favorite flick, but I'll tell you what. I, I tell all my kids, if you've never seen Karate Kid, go see it, because there's so much in that first Karate Kid that every martial arts, I don't care who you are, and, you know, some, some martial arts will probably say, oh, that, that film was this or that film was that. There's so much in that film that anyone can learn uh, from, whether it's a kid or an adult. I just think there's a lot of good stuff in that film. And even now, I'll, I'll still watch it. If it comes on TV or something, I'll still flip it on. That it's uh, the movie is in the 1980s, I believe. But it's still yeah. a movie that that I still, you know, I still enjoy. I mean, there's a lot of good movies out there, a lot of good actors out there right now. But um, it's still a movie that I, you know, I know the acting wasn't all that great, but it was just a lot of good stuff in it. So and that's, yeah, a, that, that's a lot. One of my what's that? That yeah, it's a great movie and. It's a great movie, despite the fact that it's not really a great movie. Right, exactly. And I know a lot of people feel that way. But I think a lot of people will also look at it and say, you know, he's actually teaching the kid, you know, discipline. He's teaching him, you know, about bullying. Everything that we teach today is in that movie, in some, you know, in some form. So, Did you have a chance to see the new one with Jackie Chan? I did. <laughs> I did. And, you know, some, I, I thought it was great. I thought it was great. Again, you know, I, you know, Jackie Chan brings a whole different light to uh, to the Karate Kid movies, but um, I, I just I, I like it. I, mean, I, I really did. I really did. It showed it showed a little bit of everything in that movie, you know, especially having the references back to the early one. So, yeah, I I enjoyed it too. I was a little surprised at how much I liked it, and that it seemed to do a pretty good job of capturing the spirit of the first one. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. How about a favorite martial arts actor? Anybody that, that you like watching on screen? You know something? Yeah, there's a lot of good ones, but um, yeah, I, I would have to say not a, not really a favorite actor. I mean, I, I love watching uh, Jason Statham in there. I know he's martial arts unlimited. Um, but I, I, I enjoy watching him. I, I think he's a pretty talented guy. Um, he's probably one of my favorites right now. I watched the new Fast and Furious movie over the weekend, and he oh, has he some did. fight scenes in there. That it, it was, it was good. It was good. It's not my, not my favorite in the series, but yeah, um, and you know something. I'm not even sure if he's trained in martial arts, but I mean, some of the things that he does really, really impress me. And I think right now he's one one of the best actors out there. You know, in, you know, action right there. Based on what I saw this weekend, I would be shocked if he doesn't have some martial arts training. Yeah, well, I, I think the same thing. But you know, something he's again, he's a quiet guy. I just happened to see him on an interview the other day, and um, he was very quiet about that kind of stuff. So I, I, I'm sure I could find it out online or something. But yeah, I would be surprised too if he didn't have some kind of martial arts background. I'll, I'll see what I can find out. Of course, um, you know some of the things that you're mentioning, links to the movies and everything will be in the show notes that we post online. And I'll yeah. see what I can find out about Jason Statham's background. Sounds good. How about books? Any martial arts books that you? Uh, my favorite martial of? arts book is uh, you know book by Fumikoshi Kyohan. My my favorite book. I mean it's uh, it, it's what we refer to as the Bible of uh, Shotokan Karate. And um, always been my favorite book. I have it sitting right here, as a matter of fact. So. And tell us a little bit about what's in there. Um, you know, it has it has everything from a um, proper way to bow into class to forms to basics, uh, proper foot movement. It's got everything in there. And I, I tell all my students, if you're going to be serious. This is this is the book you want to get right here, and most martial artists they'll know the book, and this this book is written years ago. Yep, one of one of my favorite uh, books. 
Yeah, it is. It is a great book, and I, I yeah. you know, I'm playing dumb because it's an interview. Oh, oh so you know I, it. I, I, I have it on my bookshelf, absolutely. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's yeah, one of my favorites. I mean, I have a whole bunch of them. I have a lot of books by um, <clears throat> Sensei Kanazawa, who explains in depth, you know, a lot of things. But nothing, I don't think any, any book that I have is as in-depth as uh, Johan. Any martial arts-related goals you might have coming up? Or well, for the f- you know, you, you probably know... Um, that right now what I've done, I just recently sold my school to one of my students. And uh, so we're making some moves. So my goal right now is to be able to expand, you know, the uh, AIKA family. And uh, so my goal right now is to be able to go to all the schools we have right now and continue teaching um, without having the responsibilities of owning the school and Worrying about who's laid on rent and excuse me, who's laid on uh, dues and all that other stuff. That's going to be one of my younger guys now that'll take care of all that stuff. And so he's going to give me more time to go out and just teach on a more personal level. Um, and you know, I'm hoping to do that in other schools, not just my own school, but two other schools that um, people that I know. I'll just be able to go there. You know, if they, if they want. You know, I, I teach a lot up in Maine. And um, I just want to be able to go to other schools and just pass on um, what I know. So, oh, that's great! It's not, you you sound really happy with this. You know, I am. I mean, this was supposed to happen a few years ago. Unfortunately, uh, something happened where uh, one of my students uh, wasn't able to uh, do what he was going to do. So, so all that got put on hold. And now, you know, you guys know DJ Oleski. He's he's the guy that will be taking over my school. And two of my other students will be taking over the Worcester school. So it's going to free up all, um, you know, a lot of my time right now. So I'll just be able to devote most of my time just to teaching at the other schools as, as well as these two. So, and, you know, like exactly. we have seven, seven schools right now. And, you know, hopefully within wow. the next couple of years, we'll be able to expand on that. So, Well, that's great. And yeah. I think that from what I've heard, Many instructors say, and honestly, I've heard you say this in the past that you know, the dream is really all all about the teaching. It's not, it's not the logistics. It's not, as you said, keeping up on the business side. It's just to be able to share. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And you have to, you have to be able to pass on what you've learned because you know, so you don't want to take it with you. Yeah. You don't want to be the only person out there that you know knows this move or knows that move and never pass it on to somebody that's going to be around longer than you. Let's face it, we're, none of us are going to be around forever. So by me making this move, you know, giving the school to somebody else, and, you know, with all the been with me now for 22, 23 years now. So, so he's learned quite a bit for me, and now it's time for the younger guys to step up and uh, take over the reins. Great. Great. So, yeah. Cool. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. And all that happens uh, September 1st. So I know that I heard last night that you know, there was a whole bunch of different stories at the last tournament about, you know, what's going on. They heard you were sick. They heard you were moving. They heard you sold your house. Blah, blah. Nope, none of that's true. <laughs> what's happening is that we're just turning it over to, to the younger guys and let them start doing that. So I'm still teaching and I have no no plans to stop teaching. That's something that we'll, I will do forever. So. Good. I I hope so. I, as as someone who has trained with you, it would yeah. be a shame if you ever stop teaching. No, yeah. I, I have no plans on stopping teaching. So. Good. So our final real question, um, a little bit more open ended. Any parting advice for the people listening? Any parting advice? I would say you know just. Just be honest in your training. That, that, that's my biggest thing, be honest in your training. I tell, I tell my students that every night. If you practice weak, then you will definitely be a weak kata person, fighter, whatever it is. So however you train, you're there for a reason. Put, get the most out of it. Absolutely the most out of it. Don't, don't go in there you know, on a bad day thinking, oh, I'm just going to go easy today. No, you got to practice 100% all the time. And I think, you know, by doing that, it opens your eyes to doing everything else that you do, whether it's in a job or whether it's in martial arts. I think you just got to be honest with yourself and just give it 100% all the time and help those people that are around you. There's other people out there that started off just like, you know, you and me did. 
and um, you got to get that person on the, on the right path, and hopefully they turn out like you and me. You've been doing this for a long time also, and um, it's obviously something that you're going to stick with for a long time too. And, you know, just like you're doing right now with me, I'm doing it with somebody else, and we just keep passing this along, and hopefully everything just continues and never never gets old. No, it definitely doesn't get old, and, and nope. um, I think that's because there are enough people like you that, that have this attitude and that, that drive to give 100% to everything all the time, and um, I thank you for that, and I'm sure there well, are thousands well, of other people. I mean, you, know, I mean, you were a great student. I loved having you in class. I'm glad we you know, stayed friends you know, throughout the years, so, um, you know. And, you know, I know I know your instructor and everything, and she did a great job with you. So, or they did a great job with you. So, well, thank you. Well, I hope you know. I hope you're successful in, in all this. Also, it sounds like you're you're going to be trying. I'm trying. <laughs> so, just a couple more things, and you know, we'll we'll flip it a little bit now. This is this is my my chance to try and help you. Of course, mm-hmm. you run a tournament every year outside yep. of Worcester, the the Worcester Classic. Um, and that's coming up. Tell yeah, us a little bit about that. So the, the Worcester Classic is coming up May 2nd. It's in Uxbridge. Uh, it's about uh, not even 10 minutes out of Worcester. Uh, it's an event that we normally have about you know 400 competitors that will compete in weapons, forms, and fighting. Um, it's a great day. I mean, people that I've known forever, they always show up. People like Mike Clark, Jeff Wood, Tony Gould, people that I don't see all the time. They always come to my my event, which is great, you know. And I love seeing those guys, and they're guys that um, they just have so much to pass on to everybody else. They're out there watching all the new people that come up, and they're impressed. I know they are. Someone can someone might not say that, but I know they're impressed. So it's a great event. I've been, uh, you know, I've competed it. at it. I've yeah exhibited at it and, and looking forward to coming back again this year well, i appreciate it thanks thank you so if anyone wants to get a hold of you what's what's the best way they could <clears throat> they can reach me um, you know, through the website at mellows martial arts dot com uh, they can reach us on facebook under the same mellows martial arts and i don't do you need a, you want a phone number or anything or no no, I think that's I think that's okay yeah, unless you really want to the, publicly give out no, your phone no, number. No, that's the best way to uh, to do it, right? Okay. Right there. All right. Well, I'll make sure those links are in the show notes as well. Yeah, uh, it's great. I appreciate it. Sure. Well, I I thank you for being here on on Whistle Kick Martial Arts Radio. And had a good okay. time, Jeremy. I, I wish you luck with everything you do over there. Thanks for listening to this episode of Whistle Kick Martial Arts Radio. Thank you to Sean Mello for appearing on the show. Please be sure to subscribe to the show so you never miss one of our weekly episodes. If you like the show, we'd appreciate a five-star review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can check out the show notes at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And while you're over there, if you want to be a guest on the show or know someone that would be a great addition, please fill out the guest form. And of course, if you'd like to learn more about what we offer at Whistlekick Sparring Gear and Apparel, please check us out on the web at whistlekick.com. Train hard and have a great day.